Good evening, everyone, and I welcome all of you to our first alumni live event. I can see many people joining, and we are also equally excited for this event. Let me introduce you to the speaker of our webinar, Sid Paul. Hi, Sid Paul. Welcome. Hi, Sid Jawan. Thanks for having me, and thanks to your eye, my school, for having me. Thanks, it's thanks. It's really special. Quite. Uh, Great. So, Sid Paul is an alumnus of Vipyor High School, Goregaon, and he passed out of the academic year 2010. Uh, let me give a little background about Sid. Okay, he is a budding music composer, songwriter, and producer. He began his journey in music with guitar uh, at the age of 13, and eventually found his calling as a composer. He supported his compositional skills with production techniques, and soon became a music producer too. His recent project was Please Find a Tad Season Three for Amazon Mini TV as a mini as a music composer. He also collaborated with Tips Music for the song Days Mere Days as a music director on India's 75th Independence Day. He is connected with various brands and he does a lot of ad films like Man with brands like Man Matters, Big Fit, Microsoft, Officers Choice, and many more. Okay. Thank you, Sid, for your time. And over to you. Please start strumming and tell us your experience and journey in the field of music. So sure. thanks, thanks, ma'am. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, you all know my name already because thanks for the lovely introduction. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, quickly divide my life as to you know because uh, I've been also told you know speak about how I started and where I am right now. So currently I'm 27 years old. So I'll divide my life into then my teens and my early twenties till now. So you all will come to know how I started and all that. So I started into music uh, thanks to my father. My father has a deep passion to sing. Although he's a businessman, but he sings well. Yeah. He, you know, he's been uh, singing since I was a kid. So I've had that thing for music. You know, I can say he bought it in me, and he wanted me to learn. singing but i was very naive and uh, immature back then i was like mujhe sare gama seekhna nahi hai so let me do something else i, I don't want to learn i just want to sing so anyway but like you know uh, i had some other way around then when i was in the age standard i uh, found a calling in music to the guitar so i kept it home with an rock on i had a movie rock on at come no credo that name so i i just i was very fortunate that i found my calling the moment i saw the guitar i was like okay this is it music is what it is like at that young and age it was very rare for me to have it because i was an extremely introvert is conscious and you know i wasn't great in studies or anything but i just found my calling out like, okay, this is it and uh, so i started with the guitar and um, I started learning. Then uh, uh, that also helped me uh, position myself better in school. Cause uh, so the eight to ten standard, I was kind of bullied in school for my color, and so this became like this weapon for me. Okay, this is what it is. You know, this gives me that stance, stance and validation and all that. But uh, so eventually, when I when I was you know learning guitar, also I always had this knack to compose, as opposed to Playing, you know, songs which are already exist. So everyone will be like, "Are you guitar or jazz?" So play something. So I, I didn't feel it. You know? So I always had an act to compose something or the other. So that's when I realized that okay, I have something to you know give off or more. And thanks to my father, also I started seeing music as a, a diversified thing, not just being an instrumentalist or just doing one branch of it. So I then. Branched out into composing uh, during my early teens, and but I think ah uh, so yeah I composed a song for Vipyor in the ten standard. I still remember it, but it's very it's very interesting. Yes, yeah, so I think that was the first life the first composition, and uh, this friend of uh, this classmate of mine, Anthra, she had written it and I composed it on it. And then we used to have Viva, and we all have Viva, right? So we used to participate in band. I represented our school. In uh, Jamna Bay for some uh, inter-school thing, we never won because I was really bad. But I still think I'm the best out there. Anyway, 
So back then, uh, in uh, during teenage time, I went to college and I was still posting guitar, uh, but still this I was just entering that phase of composing. You know? And then I used to play years and there while in college for a few artists and stuff like that. So after my degree college got over, after my degree college got over, the early 1920, that's when I fully started composing. Like I started to sing a little, then I was you know composing bit by bit, and uh, uh, that's when I realized okay, this is what I want to do. Because I now started seeing music as a whole and not just the one thing. And I'm very particular about uh, not not being able to multitask. Like even in music, you have a lot of branches and you should be able to do it. So I was fortunate enough that I have that intellect thanks to you know, growing up, that people, my mentors and everyone. So I then got into composing and when I got into composing, I was also playing guitars. Because guitar was still my you know main thing. Mm. I was playing guitar live for all the Bollywood bands like uh, music composer Mithun, then uh, Richa Sharma, Akasa Singh, Asis Kaur, Sri Ramayal, Talad Diwandiwala, Sasha Tripathi, all these such to cool. And I still remember, it's, it's a funny thing, I had gone on a date in my 19, when I was 19 or something, this girl had asked me, what do you want to do? Uh, so I told her, like, I actually managed that. I was like, I want to be a touring musician. And a year later, I was, a year or two later, I was indeed touring. I started playing for all these singers and stuff. It was great fun. And uh, yeah, uh, so I started uh, playing the uh, guitars for all these uh, Bollywood bands. And side by side, uh, I was also, you know, composing here and there for short jingles and stuff like that. So. When you compose a song, right, you also need the music arrangement, you need the production, you need the track, right? So I should not produce. Although uh, I have a studio, my, which my dad built it after his passion, and he had a longer vision, I never realized that. The studio has been there since I was in the 10th standard. I never used it, 10 years I never used it. But eventually, at 19, 20, I started using it. And I realized, you know, I have a lot, I should not be wasting it. So, out of necessity and out of the hunger, I started producing. I learned production on my own. I had a laptop on myself. YouTube was my biggest teacher for production, and my other music producer friends here and there asking him stuff like that. And then, you know, finally figuring it out for yourself also. But my every month, but the most of the days in a month, just to go and touring. Because I was heavily, like 10 days or 15 days a month, it was just touring. Composing was just about Jabili to project at them. So then uh, this was happening, and then then I started feeling saturated with uh, playing, you know, for Bollywood bands. Because I'm very particular, because I don't like just being a sidey and just it felt like a sidey job, in all honesty. The pay was epic, the pay was great, great travel, free travel. People, my friend would be like, oh, so you are going everywhere, do you pay for yourself? No, I don't know, people pay. Oh, so you also get paid to play? I mean, yes. So people thought it's the life. I mean, it was a great life. And really, I don't want to change anything about it. But then eventually it got saturated. And uh, so during lockdown, uh, when lockdown uh, kicked in, but a year before lockdown, I was just getting the saturation and I was like, I need to leave, but the money was so enticing and the money was so, you know, uh, fascinating I mean, everyone run and run and run mm. <laughs> But eventually when lockdown happened, I think, obviously it's an extremely unfortunate circumstance, the lockdown. But I was able to see it as a very uh, a big blessing for me. Because I took this dance, I did my one gig with Richa Sharma, and I was like, okay, this is it, I quit, I told my parents. I can't do this anymore. And my parents, I, I can't thank God enough for having, like, for, for giving me such beautiful parents. Mm. They supported my journey since day one. I mean, I've, be, I've been a rebel. I told my father when I was in the ninth standard uh, that my father was worried because I was not studying for my boards. Uh, ten standard. He said, What are you going to do? I told him, like, no, yeah, I'm going to open a guitar shop. So that's what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. I'll guitars, sell guitars. That's all I could think. Yeah. I didn't have the 
you know, pro side of the long road is it? Out of that. But I'm thankful for them uh, for supporting me and you know for giving me the uh, the space and the love and the uh, courage, like you know, instilling it. He do it, and maybe it's my father's in a way uh, motive also because what when he was struggling in his times, he also wanted to be a singer. He couldn't make it. I mean, like our other plans for him was to get to take care of family and all that. He set up his empire, but he. In a way, like I never realize it. Neither do I constantly think of it. But I, like he says, that you know, I mean, I'm able to fulfill his dream. So I feel really, you know, grateful for that. And yeah, so lockdown happened. I said, this is it. I quit. So till then, so lockdown is 2020. So 2018 to 2020, I had a rapo of you know, I had done production also. I had done the web series. I had done. I had done for the ice cream video and stuff like that. So. I was like, okay, I'm quitting, mm. and the lockdown was pretty much dark also for me because I was uh, going through a lot of uh, depressive, you know, things for myself and uh, a lot of finding myself, a lot of shitty relationships and stuff like that. And eventually, I was like, I, but I took the courage, like I took the risk to quit it, and thankfully, I had work also in lockdown with production and you know, something or the other. I mean, I mean, it's not a and I'm glad I took that decision because I don't want to go back to playing live for someone else. I'd rather do it for myself. And uh, so now here I am producing for web series, ad films, singles, with my own stuff. And um, yeah, so. Great, nice. Uh, Seth, you know, I, I just have like, you know, a couple of uh, questions since you were uh, you know, sharing your experience. Uh, did you feel, if you feel any major obstacles and challenges, you know, when you took up this field, uh, you had you had to connect with people, uh, get wow. look out for resources. How did you map out to take up this survey? Uh, so I'll be very honest you with you. I've been an ungrateful human for the longest time of my life, till I think the age of 25 or something, and I didn't realize how lucky I am. Was because so I had connections because. Uh, my dad had set up a commercial studio thing. So I had connections from there, like someone or the other used to come. I was doing, I was building my profile, but yet I used to approach them off. My dad would make me interviews. So every dot was connecting somewhere or the other. Right. A lot of word of mouth and cold, cold emailing and stuff like that, everything was happening. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate that I had connections because of the studio. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like my father, I'll be very honest, like, it's borderline nepotism, but uh, <laughs> like he gave me the way, or he made me connect to people, and eventually I had to you know, figure it out for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how it happened. Obstacles, uh, uh, I think more than my mental life, there were no other obstacles. I was just not sorted in my head. There were a lot of things happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So, since you share, you're sharing of experience of production and you know going live on stage and playing with you know someone like as big celebrities like Vichya Sharma and all. So uh, there's a lot of different skill set which is required when it comes to production and when it comes to performing live on stage, right? So would you like to highlight what are the key main skill set needed, you know, because a production requires a lot of technical bit, uh, also a lot of creativity is also needed. How do you create that balance? So uh, I think uh, what you, what First of all, your skills, your fundamentals have to be clear. You practice at home and then you prepare and you play outside to the world. And uh, you need good stage presence. You, you have to be confident enough on the stage. Interact well with the band. Because it's not a one-man show. When you're with the band, and especially a singer, solo singer act, so it's the singer who's playing, mm. and the band supports him or her. So it can't be like, it's for you, you know? it's not you. Right. 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 Okay. And do, do you think that uh, a lot depends on how you network with people and with whom you perform? The, like, do you feel touring to places and traveling to different cities, exploring culture also plays a significant role? I mean, uh, eventually, see, everything happens in Bombay. Hmm. We just tour with different places, wherever the show is, I'm going to Bombay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might connect with musicians as such. Networking is important, but now I've realized that uh, as long as your product 
that product can be your skill or your song or your anything is valuable and as long as you aim at creating value for the world people will come to you having said that i'm not saying he just stay at home and make something and just do that some of them will find you not not that way be out there i mean just show yourself talk to people connect with people that networking is great but being dependent on networking i think that's a no no your skills will eventually speak for itself always and since you mentioned that you started at the age of 13 uh, do you regret the what that was too late or you know i should have started early or i should have created some base or do you feel that you know that was the right age at least i could identify my own abilities no i i never thought that because so i don't know how, how many of you who are watching can relate to this whenever you find your calling right and whenever fast it should just shoot like a movie Right. And you can't see a left, right, center, bottom, up. Which means, I mean, that this is what eight. Hmm. So I, I never thought that way. I start, I should have started early and all that. Ha, I mean, during late teens, I felt that I had this comparison trap. So I should think he should have started early and all that. But I'm, I just don't want to change anything. Like I'm glad the way it happened. Hmm. Okay. And is it? easy and comfortable to function independently solo or you know you feel working with a band is a different experience uh i mean everything i feel you should take every experience so for me everything that i've done so far has just prepared me for the next step so playing with a band also helps me understand arrangements you know musical arrangements that i can apply in production hmm. and um uh, uh so yeah and uh, when it comes to production and sitting at one place you know it is because it's passion right and also right. your profession so that feel like work right. there is stress there are deadlines we have deadlines we have to finish something the next day we have to submit it we have to work a 15 hour shift or 16 hour or 20 hour or 24 hours hmm. so there have been times that i worked for like 1.5 days hmm. straight away but because it's passion it doesn't feel like you know work Okay, I'll burn out, but I still won't regret that. Okay, okay, great. Um, so when it comes to uh, you know music as a career, now if you go to see, there are lot of options available. Okay, there were the traditional times where they used to say riyaz karna, and now there's so much of sound mixing is done. You have so much of digital uh, way being done. How do you feel like you know is it important for anyone to who is taking up music as a career? not necessary that only skill set is needed but your technical knowledge when it comes to you know uh, using a graphics or using the digital mode of uh, you know tools how do you feel is i mean is it really important for a musician in today's times yes i mean see music as a whole and i would suggest that if you start off with the guitar or the piano or whatever like maybe doing a school time and all that Hmm. See a brighter future that you can be a composer, you can be a singer, also, you can be a songwriter. Right. You can do many things. Reason being, uh, because I've thought about, about today's, today's time, time, like you know, age, 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 age. Otherwise, you're a prodigy. Like you started at the age of two. Right. Now, say, when the bajaj is there, then you know, you're a world famous singer and all that stuff. But you can. There are a lot of avenues, and technical skills are a must. Right. Uh, it just it just lets you be a one man one woman army. Mm-hmm. So you're not you're not dependent on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And what are the typical working hours? We don't have working hours. Like, I don't know. I don't know what uh, paid leaves are, sick leaves are. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. So usually I start at 11 a.m., 11 or 12 p.m. Then I'll be in the studio till 10. There'll be something or the other. So now people find. So I really don't know how time passes. I mean, okay. because it's not like I force myself to sit. It's not just all day or that. And having said that, uh, there's this uh, very uh, toxic culture of hustle that's going on. Uh, just for everyone who's hearing, I mean, the, the younger generation. Sixteen hours a day working, sixteen hours a day, sixteen hours a day or fifteen hours a day or twelve hours a day doesn't mean you work every hour and don't take breaks. You work in sprints. I mean, you work like four hours and take a break. Right. So everything constitutes the moment you wake up. That's also your work hour. Mm-hmm. Just remember that. So it's nothing fascinating. If you're passionate, you will put in the work. Mm-hmm. 
But that doesn't mean you just keep on working and going on. Yeah, absolutely. As you're passionate, you're enjoying and it's keeping you, you know, high and you're satisfied with your overall, you know, uh, culture and the way you're functioning. I'm sure uh, it will keep you mentally and physically as well happy. Yep. Great, great. Thanks. Thanks, Sid, so much. We will and conclude the session. Obviously, we need a masterpiece from you. So, you know, we sure. want to see you and, uh, just, just to conclude, like, I'm really, I, I feel really happy to do this. And I'll, I'll tell you all why. Because uh, during the farewell, 10th farewell, mm -hmm. I, I still remember I was in like, so there used to be this ceremony, right? But they would award the best student or this, blah, 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 yeah. whatever. So I used to be in the audience and I used to look at it like, yeah, they are not uh, doing anything for me. I mean, like, come on, you can't ask for it if you have nothing for yourself. So I used to, I used to feel really uh, let down back then and I was like, okay, will I amount to anything eventually? Because school is such, right, where the comparison hits you very high. Right. And you are, you know, like all, the, all of those things and all that. So you, you just feel, ki, okay, uh, uh, is school the end after this? What will you do and all that? And uh, I used to always think in my head, you know, one day I want to come to the school and I kid you not, I've uh, told this to myself, ki, one day I want to come to school and just maybe give a talk and all that. And if this is happening, so I just feel really blessed and out of the world to do this and I'm so excited and I'm to share it with you all. So just letting you all know, coming back to the whole thing, uh, life really doesn't end in school. I mean school is just one medium, then you go to the next. Eventually your skill sets matter. I'll be very honest. I'll be very honest. I haven't collected my degree, my college degree. I still haven't collected because this was already working for me, my passion and paying me well. So eventually your skill set would matter. Having said that, I'm not saying everyone drop out of college, no. Things work differently for each and everyone. But find it for yourself. I mean, peer pressure may don't do anything. Try different activities, try different uh, more uh, modes and mediums if you haven't found your passion yet. And eventually you'll find something that okay, this is what you want. And uh, yeah, if parents are also supportive, nothing like it. Because Eventually, the, mo the moment your skills are really killer and you're adding value, right, the money will flow. I have realized that. So true, so true. Thank you, Sid, for being so candid and you know, being honest and sharing your uh, experience. I'm sure it will give a lot of insight to all the you know young students and budding musicians. They will get more ideas and creativity to know where to take their pathways now. I'm glad and anyone who wants to, all I'll say also anyone who wants to pursue the performance arts or anything creative, right? So it's one thing that your parents or your family say, you are beta, beti, you're very good. Mm. You know, you need to test the waters eventually. Right. Like don't be like, ki nahi nahi, my father said I'm good, so I'm good. Mm. You have to, like every parent should ask, ki, are you any good? So I'm accordingly pursued and keep working on a club. Okay. Can we see you now performing live? At least a short piece, maybe for a minute. Okay. I'll, I'll sing a song of mine. Yeah, yeah. What else will you see? Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I hope you all can hear yes, me because yes, I. Audible, so, this is a song I had written uh, with a friend of mine, Rishi Patel, who writes to me. Uh, it's called Pujo Sahi. And uh, it just speaks of you know, relationships and stuff. I'll sing a bit of it. Aise to na dekho. Jesse is the people. Ruka was a man. Who is on the hill? Is it on a deco? Jesse is the people. Ruka was a man. Who is on the hill? Who is on the hill? Big 